All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Great, Great Teacher Onizuka, Onizuka episode 20. 20. All right. Okay. Yeah, Rumi Kanzaki has been taught a lesson mm -hmm. from the great teacher Onizuka right. himself. She has been defeated. Maybe. Right. And and yet, it was so good, the mm -hmm. way he did it, that, like, it, she, she really, really is the great teacher like, Onizuka. Like, but she really could be. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Because that's the thing. Like, I have my doubts because, mm -hmm. you know, she's so, like... It's so much of... Right, because it, it could totally be something where she's like, okay, Onizuka, you're cool, but other teachers, nah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. And that's a start. That's a great <laughs> yes, start. absolutely. So if it's anything more than that, though, like, like just as how far like it's actually come through, like, oh, that, that would be yeah. amazing. Uh -huh. And then, like, Aizawa, you're next. Like, mm -hmm. I mean... Maybe some, like, shenanigans in between, you know, for sure. naturally. I mean, she wants to learn how to ride a motorcycle, that's so... That's true, you know. that's true. But, yeah. Hey, that's a great point. You know what I didn't realize about the simplicity of learning to ride a motorcycle? That's a motor skill thing. That's a... That's not a book smarts thing. Oh. You can't be taught that without gotcha. actually learning and practicing doing it. Sure. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like, you could be told how to ride a motorcycle, but right. until you actually get on the motorcycle and mm -hmm. do it, that's the kind of thing that Onizuka can teach her. Sure. More like, not just literal motor uh -huh. functioning skills right. or things like that, but... Like, and I mean, I'm sure her knowledge of physics and things like that would help with, like, going around tight turns. With, I don't know. Yeah. But, but um, yeah. But, yeah. but looking forward to more, like, kind of hands-on teaching. Right. And Practical and, stuff. Don't take that the wrong way, Onizuka. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh guys anyways. love this show looking forward to it so without further ado let's get into it <laughs> that transition when he's so like, proud right, of it. like yeah now i am james bond i do kind of miss though the the letters, you know, oh, just yeah, going yeah. across the screen. Is he go? Oh. No, no, no. Huh. <laughs> this is one of those shows that I will definitely be rewatching in the dub. Oh, yeah. But, like, I can't wait for these openings to be nostalgic like that, you know. On rewatch, you know. Lonely, lonely, lonely. Such a good description for Onizuka. Lonely, I mean, lonely. Really? Right? <laughs> lonely, lonely, lonely. Nailed it. Lonely. <laughs> 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 I love how <laughs> this is all just how he sees himself in his head, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then he wakes up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Is this paintball? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, it's like a yeah, airsoft or something. Sergeant Sanders. <laughs> Is this a new character? Or I think so. Oh. oh my gosh! She does like him! Aww. Now, Onizuka, don't try and help at all! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's. <laughs> uh huh. Oh! <gasps> Ah! <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. <laughs> okay. Huh? <laughs> Brilliant detective work here. Who's 
He's like, all right, this is my moment. Oh no! Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh my gosh. But that's not the person who actually sent it. <laughs> I don't know how much he is like Onizuka, though. Oh my gosh. Your great love sensei is here. <laughs> Matchmaker, yes. <laughs> yes. No. Everything will be daijoubu. Everything won't be daijoubu. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh! Ah! <laughs> it's a mother complex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's blushing! The legend from class 2. Oh. Liar, she totally sent the letter. Pretending to be the go between. Right. She's insecure about her height, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> and he's too thick to see, like, uh -huh. the obvious. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the basketball legend. Gotcha. Ah. Yeah, she, she destroy all the other girls. <laughs> A dunk shot. Whoa! That's awesome! Whoa! <laughs> He's still just staring. Ah. He okay, no, he was no, he wouldn't. <laughs> That's mean. That's mean. <gasps> oh, he stood up no for way. her! And from that moment on, oh. it's been love. Oh, they beat him up! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's it's confirmed now. If you're not, if you're so yeah, thick that you can't see it. Ah! Love letter. Oh, what is this wholesome episode? Yeah. Like, oh, this oh, oh no! Ah! Knocked some teeth out. Yeah. I'll kill you. <laughs> I love how they're basically like, like brothers, you know, like. Yeah.普通そうだろ。つまりそれは断られた人だ。いや、absolutely。村井が他に好きな人とかいたりすると、でしょ？俺、藤田茜が好きみたいだ。ああ。Bro. Really? No! Oh. You idiot! Oh, this kills me! Two. Ugh. God, I just keep forgetting they're, they're 15. Uh -huh. 14. Jeez. Wow. Uh. Oh my god. Uh. This is Onizuka, what? Hide? Oh, 
What are you wearing? Like, <laughs> oh, oh, geez, he's a lot older. Yeah, mm -hmm. was a boxer in high school. Yeah, oh, he might be hey. speaking the truth, too. Yeah. Oh. What, she's going to come save him? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh hey, at least this seems to be wrapping up rather well for Murai, maybe. Are, come on, come on, come they on. Can't, they cannot end it here. In, they man. cannot end it. Oh, come on. Jeez. Come on. Yep. Yep. Oh, he finally clued in. Needed some prompting, but serious prompting. Yeah. If it's already too late, that's gonna be like so realistic, though. Yeah. Uh huh. After all, she does have very long legs. She probably will move quicker. Oh yeah. It's great though. You know mm -hmm. it's great though? They go to the same school together. Exactly. So it's not like yeah. It's yeah. not like <laughs> oh no, I'm you're leaving the country. Again. You're yeah. gone forever. Yeah. No, it's like come you know, come back tomorrow exactly. and this episode will continue. <laughs> What was this episode? I don't know. This was the most slice of life, like, just like, like, goofy, like, wholesome, quirky, oh, do and, you love her? And, and it was, like, so much of it was just so stupid. In so corny and stupid, yeah, yes. in, in traditional Onizuka fashion. <gasps> but, but then there were those moments that were just oh really sweet and stuff, too. And, uh... uh yeah, especially because, like, wow. these people are, like, 14, you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh. So much for, uh, uh, yeah, Orumi Kanzaki. It's, like, not yeah. even, not even, <laughs> like, what? No. She is, like, like, it's all okay now. Oh, boy. Wow.
this episode. This, this was like, oh, like, you know how, like, we have this formula for uh-huh. Onizuka, right? Right. Screw that. Yeah. Like, let's, let's Except make Except Onizuka this... have almost nothing to do with the entire episode. Yep. The yep. biggest <laughs> contribution that Onizuka <laughs> made this entire episode was by going on the boat ride... <laughs> With Kunio's mom, yep. so that Kunio's mom could pinch him by the ear and say, "You go, you go, walk that girl home." You know? Oh my gosh! Oh. Wow. In some ways, they set it up, in, in, you know, just so that Odizuka might not have even been thinking that far ahead. But I do think that was his intent, you know, just for the for the gist of it. Other than the fact that he's trying to score with the hot mom, you know, the hot single mom. Like he's right. he's, he's. I think his totally... motivations are pretty. Pretty straight, forward. pretty straightforward. Very straightforward, <laughs> you know. Um, but but Kunio, like, but, holy crap! It took you long enough. Like, yeah, and this was just this one is, episode. This is a twenty-minute episode, and in a lot of ways, <laughs> like in a lot of ways, the episode was kind of like clunky because they were all doing it in one episode with this character that we hadn't right. been introduced to and right. stuff. But at the same time, it totally works because Kunio is not the brightest. You know. Oh my god, no! Kunio is an idiot. Yeah, like, like if this was if this was Kikuchi. Like, this would have been a very different episode. A very different episode. Like, can you imagine yeah. Kikuchi with, like, mm-hmm. someone that has a crush on him? Yeah. And, like, like they're a little bit socially awkward, so mm-hmm. too, so they're they're not going to, like, say anything, so they're going right. to be very roundabout with this whole thing, mm-hmm. and they can't handle rejection and stuff. Kikuchi's just going to be like, Kikuchi, yeah, he's like, I already know. <laughs> and then she's, she, she's going to be like, you do? And he's like, yes, you don't need to say anything. And she'll be like, okay. <laughs> Okay, but I still kind of want to say it, you know, or something. Yeah, yeah. And and if anything, he would he would screw up that mm-hmm. like he would maybe like try too hard or something like that. Yeah, I don't even to... know what Kikuchi would do because yeah, exactly. He's, he's so like cool all yeah, the time, yeah. you know. That like maybe that would be what the issue is or whatever. Who knows? But like, it's almost one of those things where Kikuchi couldn't oh. be in this episode like at all. At he would break all. the plot. He, he, would, he just would his, break just the his plot. existence would cause it all to shatter. <laughs> same with same with uh, Kansaki. Kansaki, you know, yeah. Or, I think, or Aizawa or any of them. Really. I think this episode relies a bit too much on the stupidity of Kunio. And, oh, yes. and, and, and let's be fair. Let's They're be 14. fair. They're 14. They're 14 or 15. 14. Like, so, like, so like, come on. Like, Come on. There's there's no way oh boy. like any of us at like 14, at least the majority of us hopefully we like hopefully. to think. I mean, you know, let, I mm-hmm. I think I think I had my first like girlfriend at 14 and that was just kind of a, a goofy silly thing, mm-hmm. but I didn't have like my first girlfriend where I really like kind of <laughs> well, really understood what I was doing or see, anything until I was 16. So and, like, and here's the th- understood what I was doing. <laughs> Don't take Until that out 16. of context. But uh, but <laughs> context matters. But but well, just the idea that anyone would know what they're doing. No, at we are all fools but, in love. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and but the idea is that, I mean, I don't know the fact that like okay, if someone if I were to get a love letter in my locker at fourteen, right. And it's from who knows who. Who knows who. Right? And there's the possibility that it's this person who's saying, I'm the intermediary, but I really need to know how you feel about this and all that stuff right. before I tell you who it actually is. It's like, oh, really? Hmm. hmm. It doesn't help, you know. It doesn't help that any potential creative genius from Kunio is getting dumbed down by his even even more idiotic, like, buddy friends. friends you yeah, know? and that's why... Like, and that's why that's why Kikuchi could not be in this because right. he would just be like, dude, no, what? Are you... Bro, <laughs> it's Bro. obvious. It's so obvious. Yeah, yeah. I, I love also that they were the ones expositing the thing of her being previously bullied for her height. Now, oh, uh-huh. here's something that I. And he I, didn't even remember. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It was something that I think was such a small thing mm-hmm. for, for him. Right, exactly. That it's not, yeah. it's mm-hmm. not, a, it's not yep. a big deal. But one of the things I think that's really cool, though, is every single time they bring up the conflict of the individual episodes in Onizuka, Mm -hmm. it's something that I think is extremely realistic for um, a school setting of that, of that time age of, you know, wherever the kids Uh, are that are involved. The specific antics might be where it gets a little bit crazy because it is Onizuka after all. But But the idea of a girl mm -hmm. who's really tall and physically a little intimidating, Mm -hmm. uh, getting bullied, but having the having the the temperament 
of someone that would never never mm-hmm. fight back. Yeah. Even though she probably could like, <laughs> like thrash at least one of those boys, yeah. like no problem. Uh-huh. I love that you had something so simple that it's not like she really knows anything great about the personality of Cunho. Like mm-hmm. we look right. at him, and he's just kind of an oh. earnest kind of loud boy. Although, you know? although because it's Cunho and he wears his heart on his sleeve so much, yeah. And the fact that she had clearly been watching him, you know, mm-hmm. and knew about the whole thing of like going and sitting on the platform yep. above the door and stuff. Yep. She probably fair knew knew a fair amount about him. Yes, like she pro, she probably knew about his his mommy issues and all that stuff, and you know, and wasn't particularly you know bothered by them. I mean, I mean, when you're in love, mm-hmm. you only see the good parts. About oh, absolutely. A person. Right. So That's, it's yeah, you can, yeah, uh huh. We are a, all a rock. In love a rock becomes you know interesting if you're. I mean, in love Earth with Chan it. exists, so you know that's that's just proof enough. <laughs> yeah. But, so. So, uh-huh. so what I love about the wholesomeness of this is this uh, Fu, Fuji, Fujimaki? Yes. Something like that. Something like that. Um, mm-hmm. she, she has this shyness about her. No, no, no. No, it was like Kujisaki or something. Yeah. And then her first name was like Fuyumi. Fuyumi. Let's call yeah. it Fuyumi then. She has this shyness about her that mm-hmm. keeps her from being confident right. because she's afraid of rejection. Mm-hmm. And what it seems like, if anything, is that she's kind of used to being not like overtly rejected probably for you know initiating feel like telling expressing her feelings to Mm -hmm. a guy but rejected from the potential for connection from say guys because Mm -hmm. either a they have their you know you know they haven't uh, gotten their own identity stuff sorted out so all they see is oh big girl i'm scared of you right Uh and their you know inferiority complex kicks in you know because yeah Mm -hmm. oh i need to be masculine or whatever right but like Mm -hmm. this is something that okay okay i i don't i don't have any like specific examples and i feel like that would be weird to talk about specific examples because they're real people and stuff Mm -hmm. yeah but i know a lot of i know a lot of ladies who are taller Mm -hmm. and the the struggles i've heard from them talking about how there are a lot of guys that they've seen be essentially closed off to the idea of gotcha. of a relationship mm-hmm. because maybe they're an inch taller than the guy or maybe um or maybe the mm-hmm. the guys uh right. that they're they're interested in are 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 shorter and stuff and the the guys just are like you know oh yeah that's right. interesting that you're into me but they don't they don't ever initiate back. They uh-huh. just kind of receive the attention or whatever. If they even perceive it. Well, well no, I'm talking more. We were okay. talking more adults. Here. Gotcha. I'm yeah. talking uh-huh. like okay. uh-huh. I'm talking the, right. the struggles of 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 taller women and inversely or, mm-hmm. or con, conversely. The inver- yeah, yeah. Basically, the opposite. The guys who are shorter having mm-hmm. basically some similar issues sure. as well mm-hmm. uh, with this. And this is something that I just found to be so so strange maybe it's because well, i'm a simple-minded guy but well, i or or here's another way to put it <sighs> yeah you're six two i'm six four yes that right? is true now if yeah. a girl that was six foot six mm-hmm. liked you now personally personally I mm-hmm, let's go <laughs> yeah I, babies no will take problem over the world, you know like, 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 let's just say i think that's it is that you're right we are blessed to be really tall so right. we've never had that issue of an inferiority kind of Right. Lack of self confidence uh-huh. in the height arena. Yeah. But I totally remember having a lack of confidence in my ability to handle rejection and my ability oh, sure. to yeah. handle yeah. expressing my feelings, mm-hmm. especially at that age. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Because that's your whole world. Like, like the. Oh my God. Yes. There, there is nothing outside of high school, and they're not even too high school right. yet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, uh-huh. I totally. I totally understand the feelings from Fuyumi, but I find it very cool that the show decided to tackle this because this is this is a thing that adult women who are like I, I don't even know what people would consider tall. Right. Like five foot ten for a fourteen year old is definitely is, tall. is definitely yeah. very tall. Uh-huh. Like most guys haven't hit their growth spurt <laughs> even at thirteen or fourteen. I mean I mean some maybe. have you know but, maybe like five eight or something like that. Yeah. But, but like uh-huh. like I, I Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also maybe 
maybe specifically that this is in uh, Japan, 5'10 is tall. Sure. Whereas for us, like 6'2 is, you know, right. Uh, uh, tall, let, let us you know? not forget that golden line from the Sword of the Stranger movie where it's like, he's over six foot tall. Whoa, he must be some kind of demon. <laughs> 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 yeah, so so I, I I totally understand Fuyumi's pain, and I I I I, I hope yeah. that if this is kind of the new direction for GTO, I will be I will be so for that, so for that like, because it just means that Onizuka is around as basically this goofy just well and bumbling like right. it's it's a way to show guy you know it's a way to develop the students more I feel yeah. like because because with Onizuka it's he is the great teacher Onizuka that's mm -hmm. what the show's called right? right it's not about whether he'll win it's about how he's gonna win exactly but here in this case this is something where Onizuka will not win he will no. not really be able no. to help the students with this unless it's in very particular situations right, right? where where his his experience will actually be able to like teach them something about themselves maybe right yeah sure you know, like like sure. one of those one of those kinds of things like self-acceptance or something i don't know totally right? totally but as for actually like <laughs> we saw how useful he was this episode he, in the beginning it would have gone much better oh if my he god had just just, just shut, shut up, up and, and stay out away of it, yeah. right mm -hmm. but because of that, that can be a great way to showcase these students and how mm -hmm. they do and yeah. and handle things and everything, right? Yeah. Because the it's basically just an opportunity to shift focus back to students that have already figured out their initial issues, you know, that Onizuka has to help them out with. And right. then now we can see them handle their issues on their own. And right. then, heck, maybe have Onizuka learn a thing or two from, like, the, you know, the, the wisdom of these 14-year-olds. Yeah. As totally. scarce it may be. But, yeah. <laughs> I just gotta say, like, this episode totally, tonally felt mm -hmm. completely yeah. off kilter like, from what GTO usually is. Because, especially last episode, like, it was it was serious stuff, and it was it had all the goofiness of, of GTO. Right. But, granted, naturally. But, <laughs> go from that to this, like, like... I, I love I love that they feel confident enough to break formula mm -hmm. in this aspect because we were running I think a little bit dry in terms of conflict potential. Right. Okay. Here's an idea. Mm -hmm. Here, here's something I just thought of. Okay. Now I could be wrong, but um, Yoshikawa and Kikuchi yes. and everything that they did and the way that they helped Onizuka out with the whole thing with the the recording, yep. the splicing of the audio and stuff and that yep. that whole thing. Was it parent teacher conference association thing? Yes. Was absolutely amazing. It was so so wonderful, uh -huh. right? If I recall correctly, the very next episode was when they introduced Kunio from the standpoint of his mom and all that stuff and the things that were happening there. Okay, I, I might be wrong, but if I'm right, then it's almost like Kunio is this weird, awkward, bumbling bomb as a transition from when they get into stuff that's heavy. Okay, so and then they're like, "All right, now let's go back to antics. Let's let's throw right. Kunio in there and have him do something." So something he's goofy. Onizuka Junior, basically. Like, like yeah. here's the thing, guys. As much as he hates Onizuka and wants him to stay the hell away from his mom, I think just Onizuka is his future, right? But yeah. like Kunio, look up, man. Like that's a good future for you. You're a pretty ditzy idiot, and like Onizuka's like got some issues. But if you just avoid maybe some of the gang warfare stuff and all that, right? You can turn out pretty good. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, you might be a little bit, you know, a little bit socially inept, but you know, and that that can that can come with yeah, time. Yeah, you can still socially it. inept, you right? Know, right. So. Yeah, but <laughs> I gotta say though, I, I did like how Onizuka was putting on the moves on Kunio's mom, mm -hmm. but she just oh yeah. didn't care. Oh yeah, and that's that's one of the things that that like okay, Kunio's mom is a badass, right? Yeah. And, yeah, and I love her. how she just instantly just grab, cu grabs Kunio's ear, and he's just like, oh, 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 all right, all right, what's, what, what is it? But but the ways that, like, Onizuka is just completely like, oh, yes, and then she's just like, oh, hey, what's that? You know? Yeah, 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 <laughs> just like, hmm, what? Yeah. <laughs> Miss me with that, you know? Yeah. It's it's great because oh. I'm sure, I'm sure in some respect, mm -hmm. she kind of finds it fun. Because it's sure. like, Oh, this just kind of makes my life a little bit more 
interesting. Yeah, it's, and I'm it's sure something. I'm happening. sure she doesn't need it. Oh no! But no. it's like, oh, I bumped into Onizuka. Had a weird day. This is kind of fun. Yeah, exactly. But, you it's, know, it's, it's it certainly wasn't forgettable. It's a little you zest, know? you know. Right. It's exactly. not going to be anything like you know baked in, if you know it's what not, I mean. It's not anything <laughs> that you would want long term, every day kind of a thing. Right. But you know, just to just shake it up bit. every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Have a little fun in life. And I, I, I love also that in in some ways, she is still the one teaching Kunio. It's not like mm-hmm. Onizuka's being some yeah. kind of surrogate dad for Kunio and like teaching him like how to be a man. If anything, that would never work. If any, yeah, because I don't think Onizuka knows mm-hmm. exactly what it's like, right. or what it means it's to more be that a man. He accidentally sort of stumbles into it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yet she kind of tells. You know, Kunio, like, mm-hmm. no, this is what's important. And you heed my words, because, you know, <laughs> mommy right. complex. But, um, <laughs> but, 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 but mm-hmm. seriously, like, listen, and he got it. Mm-hmm. He got it. And yeah. the thing is, is that I am glad that they had him get it, but not get rewarded immediately for mm-hmm. it. Yes. Because here's the thing that I think is, is cool that Onizuka, or GTO as a show, does, is they'll have characters figure things out. Mm-hmm. And they they will, but the thing is, is that they're still growing. They still right. do things badly. Yes. The execution on it doesn't work exactly. Mm-hmm. They sometimes get ripped out of the impossible situation that they're in by Onizuka. Right, him running actu- down the side of a building to right. catch them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but the actual lesson, the actual thing that they've learned, we don't get to see the result of that giving them some immediate Mm -hmm. uh, reward in some way. Yeah. And I think a lot of stories tend to jump the gun on that and shove the reward in so that they can move on to the next story. But what this is, is actually a little bit more potentially ambitious Mm -hmm. where they're saying, no, this is an open plot point now. Right. Exactly. We kind of have mm -hmm. to deliver not immediately, but eventually on them. Mm -hmm. Like all we need really is just to see them in the background at one episode, just like talking to each other. Exactly. Yeah. Then we know at the very least that that is in continuity. Have there be some cross pollination between the groups of guys (laughs) in the stories and the groups of girls in the stories. Mind blowing. You can't do that, Jacob. What? The only, well, I mean, okay, it makes sense. They're 14, right? You know, so granted, let's just make everyone gay. Like that, 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 that'll solve all the problems right there. Woo. Let's, Let's keep, Let's keep all the everyone's gay on fanfiction.net. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> but the uh, other than other than like the only the only person who really regularly interacts with like girls that is a dude is Kikuchi. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if you're th- th- saying Onizuka doesn't count, right? Yeah. Um, which then now then it makes me think, what would an episode like that be? Like, is this is this is the shipping community for Onizuka actually really strong, or was no. back in the day? No. And, and like no. Kikuchi Aizawa was the ship or something like no that. not at all there's no way also like i know the shipping community doesn't care but they're f- 14 like they're 14 come on come on no I, I i think if anything onizuka gets shipped probably with just everything and everyone you know is one of those things where onizuka is just such a legendary sure. character well i know at the very least mizuki Certainly ships Onizuku with somebody. Mizuki, you know, the girl from the first episode. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I want to go back and, like, re- okay, when I go back and rewatch this show in the dub. In the dub, yeah. Um, yeah. I, it's going to be so much fun to be able to go back and rewatch that first episode again. Yes, yes. <laughs> with the hammer and everything. Oh, it's going to be great. <laughs> oh, but yeah, this was a surprise oh. episode that I didn't <laughs> think I was going to like, and then I ended up liking right. it. Right. So, yeah. so, GTO. And I hope we get keep to see surprising more from, us. From, uh, from this character, Fiumi. Because yeah. I, I hope she's not relegated to just being there for being the, you know, to be in that one, you know, romance middle school yeah. drama episode. What we don't need the school to be is a character gener- generator, a character right. conflict yeah. generator. We want the characters to exist there, and then mm-hmm. the drama and the conflict can come from the characters as they establish yep. them, and they can, yep. you know, and they take their time with with introducing these sure. characters, of course, sure. as they become relevant and whatnot. But I want to see the the intercharacter dynamics more than just you know, say mm-hmm. Cuno and his two goober buddies. You know, things yeah, like that. for real. 
So, hey, right. if this is where it's going, more power to it. So, yeah, guys, yep. if you want to watch the next episode's reaction right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full-length reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access where you can chat with us about stories or just whatever. And if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time.